sine 30 times of i, then we got negative 4 cosine 30, and this time should be k. Right, see, so we're taking this, so this minus this, then this times this with a minus. Now this is going to come out to be minus 1. So the first one, I mean if we go through actual, and this here will be positive 1. So you have 300 i, and then you have negative, <coughs> and that should be 207.85 j. Second one, because you have a negative, 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 so <coughs> there is one more thing that should be um, 80 here. So it should be <coughs> positive, and you get 160 of i, and the second term of that is 27713k. So those are the two couples, or the moment of the couples. Then the next thing you need to do is, <coughs> we need to add these two. So if you want to add these two, you got to do the same thing here, to add these two together. And if you add, then you have the last equation, which is the resultant couple, MRC being MC1, plus mc2. <coughs> so you're looking at the 300 plus 160 times of i. Then you have the 207.85 that times of a j, except it has a negative magnitude. Then we got this plus 277, 13 of k. This is going to add up and that's going to give you 460. And this all put together should be in pound and inch because your force was in pound and the lengths were in inch. So your resulting couple comes out to be 460i plus negative 207.85j plus 277.13k. <coughs> then you need the magnitude. You need mrc. That's the square root of the x component is 460 square negative 20785 square plus <coughs> 277 one three square and that all put together should be five seventy five point eight five pound inch. Then you need the direction angles. That means you're looking at alpha. So that's cosine inverse the x component which is four sixty divided by the magnitude which is 575.85 and that gives you the first angle as 37 degrees then you have the angle with y axis that's another cosine inverse negative 207 85 575 85 and that comes out to be 111 then you have gamma that's another cosine inverse. This time you're going to have 27713 divide 57585. And this comes out to be 61.2 degrees. So, I mean, the, these two equations are identical as you would do with the force. I mean, you treat the resultant couple vector exactly as you will treat a force. You could find its magnitude and you could find its 
three angles. <coughs> so any questions on this problem? <coughs> yeah. When you uh, get MC1 and MC2 and you cross the, the vector with F2 and F4, did you use F2 and F4 to do the positive? No. When I chose the points, I chose A as a starting point and we chose B as the ending point. So your tip of this vector ends at F2. So when you do a cross product, you will use F2. The same thing happened with the second one. See, when you chose this vector, then the tip of this vector ends at F4. So <coughs> when you do a cross part, you take RAB times F4. I mean, there's nothing that stops you in going like this. I mean, all you need is a known, two known points on the two forces. Okay? So <coughs> if I go like this, the ending force is F3. But the vector is no longer RAB. It's RBA. So <coughs> your um, that was MC two. That should be going this way. So you're looking at see here to here. So you're looking at R D C multiplied by F3. And <coughs> RDC will be exactly opposite of what we have as RCD. Okay? So that's one negative. Then F3 is also negative to the one we had before. So two negative will make it positive again. And same thing in this one here too. I mean, there's nothing which stops you going this way. But if you use this, you're going from R, your actual equation is RBA times the force here. That's F1. And that's MC1. And if you put through all the numbers, it'll be the same number. Any other question? Okay. So if you had something like this, let's say you had a force.